On the Bonita, most of the survivors were shocked, cold, and seasick. And two people had sustained serious leg injuries. One, the motorman, was stuck on the doors of a hatch, out of reach from his crewmates. The other was in the care of John Isher, but was too injured to jump. His only hope was the second Navy helicopter now on scene. I talked to the helicopter pilot and said that the man who is sitting beside me has crushed both his legs and he cannot, he cannot jump. So you have to give, give him the wire and the, the belt so you can have him up. But the, wire, the wind was so strong that the wire was going completely watertight, absolutely horizontal, so I could touch the, I could touch the, the, the wheels of the helicopter. At the third attempt, then we managed to have it around under his arm and he was away. I was so tired and I was so, most of all I just wanted just to get away from this nightmare and just slide down on the flat bottom and just disappear. When it's 10 minutes to, 10 minutes to 8 in the evening, then it was my turn to jump. So uh, the electrician and me, we jumped together and we hit the, the sea and that was 2 degrees, but it felt very warm. John and the electrician were pulled onto the lifeboat and two more followed. That just left one person on the Bonita, the injured motorman lashed to the ship's hatch. The man was, uh, was very much alive. We could see him, he was, they tied him uh, on one of the hatch, hatch covers. Um, the Abbe Landoc, which is the, one of the French rescue tugs, was alongside us. Um, and we believed, or we were told, that he, they were going to have a go at uh, coming aboard to rescue him. We had one very seriously injured man on board um, and some others, um, apart from being cold, that the, they had been at sea, uh, they were traumatised. So um, we had to look after the number that we had and we left the other services to, you know, hopefully um, rescue the other the other man on board. I think it's the worst moment in my life that I had to leave him. We don't can do it anything. He was there with a flashlight. He was laying there on hatch number three, and we couldn't do anything. Well, we I, I buckled to it with the charts, and I worked out that Brixham was only 27 miles away, whereas Guernsey was 60 something. So it was a no contest. It was Brixham for the night. Assured that another lifeboat was on its way. Cox and Scales decided to head to Brixham after battling the sea for more than seven hours. He, his crew and their lifeboat came in for great praise from those who had witnessed the rescue. Consummate skill, absolutely wonderful boat handling. The Sir William was the best they ever built. That's, 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 of course, I think every lifeboat man says that ours is the best, but we know. Ours was the fastest, she sat the cleanest on the water at speed, we always thought anyway. But I don't doubt that somebody else would argue differently with regard to their own boat, but we loved her. But they both, they were fantastic how they manoeuvred the boat. It was just unbelievable. 50 attack they did on the Bonita before we all saved. They must have been so exhausted. But the work of the lifeboat and her crew had not finished for the day. They faced a tough journey back to the Devon coast. We were passing the, passing the bucket around uh, and at the various stages of Maldon here. Uh, and we had some down the after cabin, some down the forward cabin. And then the, the last few had to go in the wheelhouse. Was, we, we were just getting full. We'd been running, what, for 10 minutes, quarter an hour? And mm. we fell off a big wave. Oh, yeah. It was a big one. And uh, that's when all the bonks in the forward uh, compartment collapsed with everybody on them and what have you. And they were driving 100% and more than that because uh, the beds, they were hanging three in height, in chain, and they broke one after one, so we ended up on, on the floor, all of us. But after 15 minutes, the engineer opened the hatch down to us and they said that the motorman, Villa Crest, was, was uh, saved. But he was taken on board by a French tug. So, uh, but after this 15 minutes, when he said that he was saved, then my tears were coming. The Bonita's last survivor had been saved. At 10.45 p.m., the lifeboat finally reached land. The 29 survivors were all taken to hospital. Sadly, the man who had suffered a head injury did not survive. My wife was of the opinion that I wasn't worth a brass farthing in the garden for a fortnight. The fatigue was that, 
they are that deep. And all the crew were very similar. I was the oldest, I was the daddy of the crew at the time, and I'm probably the worst affected. But even the youngsters said that they were absolutely shattered for days. And believe you me, anybody that says a footballer is tired after 90 minutes in a cup final doesn't know what tired is. The lifeboat crew headed back to Guernsey the next day. When the volunteers finally arrived home, 25 hours after receiving the Mayday call, the island's media were waiting for them. When we saw the press um, as well, the, you start to read it and you, you, you were part of it, you start to realise, yes, well, it was, quite, uh, it was quite something. Coxon Michael Scales was one of those interviewed by the news later that day. Well, it was a worrying time, but uh, uh, we're not worried for ourselves more than that. We're worried for the people that we're trying to rescue and uh, make, trying to get them off in one piece, uh, which we succeeded with most of them anyway. And, uh, you know, we're quite happy to land them in Brixham. Michael received the RNLI Gold Medal for Gallantry, the Lifeboatman's Victoria Cross, in recognition of his outstanding courage, initiative and seamanship. His crew were all awarded bronze medals for their role in the rescue. Six days later, the volunteers at Penn Lee Lifeboat Station launched their lifeboat, the Solomon Brown. They headed to the aid of a coaster, the Union Star, that was being battered towards the Cornish coast by a hurricane. They never returned. A week after we pulled off the Bonita, the Pedley boat was lost. Dr. Shard of Arcrisus. When I came home, one of the first days after I came home, I saw on television this terrible accident on uh, Penny Lee. I really got something to think, for, think of. But I was so glad that I, that with so many of us survived, because they were so dramatic with all these fantastic, brave and skilled men, we have been all gone and lost, that's for sure. These men, they gave me uh, at least 30 more years to live. 